Hey. Yeah, thanks. It's nice to just play out in the sun and be goofy and stuff. Uh, that's usually what we do, but it was, of course, it's a little nicer to do it on Father's Day. Thanks. Yeah. She made me pancakes. She made me ice cream. She made me uh, uh, homemade. Uh, I'm sure Vanessa mainly did this one, but she made me homemade ring pops. They were like popsicles with frozen fruit pureed. She made pureed the fruit fruit herself. It was it was red, white, and blue, but she couldn't do that, so she did, tried to do primary colors. So it was supposed to be red, yellow, and blue, and so she picked strawberry puree. Bana banana puree and blueberry and it ended up being it ended up being uh, red white and brown <laughs> she's mad Some LaCroix and I finished them in a day. Jesus. No, it's a LaCroix is like a soda, sparkling water soda. What's the orange flavor called? Mandarin? Any flavor, they're all delicious. This is the thing about it, though. You're not, you can't drink it thinking it's gonna taste good for long. Because as soon as you crack it, it has a flavor, but it's like a, it's like they just put a little bit of plant extract in the in in the blend, and so the carbonation just pushes all of it out into the vapor. It seems like so if it goes flat, it loses all flavor and it just becomes almost like a syrupy water, which is pretty gross. So you just drink them fast. I wish they were smaller than full cans, honestly. If they had half cans, it would be perfect. How come? Gotcha. Were you able to do it with what I sent you? Because that was my old thing I sent you before. Okay. I joined you. Win favor. Thank you. Right. In the steps, everyone needs a weapon. Oh, I didn't change anything though. So, if if I'm not joinable, then that seems like you're not joinable by default. So I haven't changed ah, anything. Ah, a warrior. How may I serve? <laughs> Let's see the barbs make that. Yeah. Okay, so Oh. 
I don't even see that quest on my thing. What did you say it was called? Just change it. I don't, know, I don't even see that one. Change it to something you want to do. It's not weird. It just picks, it just picks the quest for you. So if you don't want to do that one. Pause it. Go to the map. And then hit the left directional pad. And it opens up your journal. And just pick a different one to track. Fight hard, eh? Make the devils pay. You need steel work? Repairs? I'm ready when I have salvage and stuff. Good to go. I'll probably die. I have three abilities. <laughs> you know, th there's a lot of historical precedent for people using weapons the way I am, with like a dagger in your left hand and a medium to, to long, you know, so like a stabbing type of sword in your right hand, like a rapier or something. It's like a super effective way to fight. Yeah, you gotta get. You, that's why I think they they do it little by little. They'll like start off with one ability and then two, then three, then four. So like all of your abilities are muscle memory by the time you get your last one, unless you've been re rearranging them. It's up to you. What do you want to do? It's not like if we don't go fight those things, it'll never happen again. We'll never be able to do that special quest that's happening. It's just, it's just how the map is. I'm coming to just grab my vape pen. Is this tier two or tier one? Need more time. <sighs> Today, Goldie wet. Daddy, how come you're so strong? So cute. That's probably the cutest thing she said to me in a long time. She's been really cute today. She's been really cute. So scared of bugs. But she's. But when yeah, but she when she's around me, she always tries to face her fears. Like she caught a bug in a cup today. It's so cute. A little moth, tiny little moth. That got wet, so it was really easy to catch. Yes. It, she, she's always at the perfect age, though, because when I'm watching videos of her when she was, like, two and three, she was so fucking cute, man. So it's just never been, like, when she would, I remember she'd crawl up on my chair when I was sitting in the back porch just chilling with her. And she'd be like, I'd be like, are you attacking me? And she'd barely be able to talk. She'd be like, I'm attacking. I'm attacking. <laughs> it's just, like, repeat what you say in, like, a cute way just because she, she knew it would make you smile. That guy scared me, stabbed him. Back demon. Now, oh, this is it. So, this is a different quest, though. This is not what you have selected. 
you right, right? Well, I don't know. I have it. Different. Maybe I don't have it selected. There we go. Whittling sanity. Now I have it selected. Okay. Yep. Hey, man. I had hoped to find a witness who saw Elias. I had hoped to find a witness. Deck merchants. They were slaughtered by demons, that much is plain. Voice. But none were summoned here. We should search the canyons. Could Elias have summoned these demons? Easily. And assuming he did, he may still be here. Stay close to me. He's staying close to us. Holding his own and tier two to one, I guess. We're gonna do both. Ah! Well, let's switch to tier two now that I'm here. We can give it a quest or two, but I think this will be. I think this will be a little easy. I don't know. We'll see. Because I was struggling when it was me, you, and Dave last time, and I had to switch to my barbarian. Remember? I got died a couple times. I think it'd be okay. You got, my guy walks like a girl though. Look at him. His butt. Look at when I walk. It's like, mm hmm. Hey, boys. What? Oh. <sighs> Boom. She walks like a girl now. I gained a level. Oh, I'm trying to get my level, sucky buns. Bitch. I got no time to bleed. These characters need to quit more. That's my only criticism back to the game. Is that you have to make them quit, and so it's kinda like cookie cutter, all purpose, I like it type of stuff. I want them to like say specific stuff they like they did in Diablo 2. Like they would constantly be saying stuff. In this in this game they only really talk when it's like a quest interaction, you know, or in NPCs. They used to just spout stuff as they were walking through dungeons. Like, man, it just smells like shit in here. <laughs> you know, it's like they just say stuff like that. Uh. Yeah. I'm going to. I'm just upgrading my level for a second here while we have a break. I guess I'll wait. Time. Dude, that's sick. I teleport. Our our objective is is this way. Ha! Now I'm getting the hang of this. Efficient. Take this, you old bastard! Kick the cane up from underneath you, you old bitch. 
I'm a thief. I want to pick your pocket. There's this old computer game I used to play called Die by the Sword, where you played as like a Scottish knight in a fantasy world, and when you would pick up nothing, like when you would loot an area and you didn't find anything, he would go, Nothing! <laughs> it always cracked me up. He would say, the voice acting was so good. He'd be like, Nothing! <laughs> he was so mad. I love it. I just don't have voice actors like that anymore, man. It's so emotional. Whoa! Or I told you so. Oh, it looks really cute out there. Your, print, your art room looks perfect. I hear a stone carver lives in that house. Oh, we can see a house on called Ganba. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a sick house. Isolated. Perfect for working in solitude. Reminds me of your house. Ah, <laughs> uh, your character's talking shit to him. That's funny. You hear that? All, my character didn't say anything, but your character said, reminds me of your house. That's interesting, yeah. I like how my barbarian makes everybody bleed, though. I miss that. Because I could just slay... Yeah. He doesn't do so much instant damage, but he just, sl like, kills everybody and then walks away. And they're all like, hey, how come you're leaving? I'm still fighting. Oh, wait, no, I'm not. I'm dead. And they just fall over. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, you beat me. I didn't even notice. It's pretty simple. I don't want to change my character, but it is pretty simple, yes. Well, if you, if you, if you change your character, you're probably going to kick me out of your game. So, just let me know if you're going to do that. Play that. Why don't you like your character? Because it's not like they're all the same. It's not like you have to play them evenly. They're all they're all gonna have a different play style. So it's however you feel like playing. What character are you right now? You're a barbarian. So if you look at your skill tree, you just you already made a decision on your plate your because you're level twenty eight. So you already made a decision on your play style by the the abilities you picked. If it's if you if you don't like your barbarian because you're like I kind of forgot what abilities are what is that what you're saying? Just yeah that that that's gonna happen no matter what. I guess there's no way around that. It's pretty simple. There's only five abilities, and then your sixth ability is like the standard attack. It's not that hard. Like it's it's not like a regular RPG where you literally have the entire bottom row of the screen filled with tiles. Like one through ten, one through ten with the shift key, one through ten with the control key, and then one through ten also with the X key. It's like seventy. This <laughs> is ridiculous. But in this game, it simplifies it down to just six, and the first one is just your your main attack that you pick. So you just gotta make sure you're not picking other abilities in the skill tree you don't want. You can refund it all and restart it too. That's what I was warning you about. Yeah. Remember when in the beginning I was saying, don't just pick abilities because they're available, because it's gonna hold off the better abilities until you spent so many points. So, 
you do have to buy some cheap abilities, but just buy cheap abilities that you kind of like and invest all your money into it. Like, max it out to five. You know what I mean? Like, your ma your basic attack needs to be maxed out. Your secondary attack needs to be maxed out because you're going to be constantly using them. Then once those are maxed out, you'll have filled in the bloodline enough to have level t or tier three and four abilities. Probably three. And the tier three abilities is where you really start to do damage because that's going to pick, like how you want to play. It's not going to be like a devastatingly damaging ability, but it'll be something like freezes enemies in place for a moment, or something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so you see, you don't have like your like uh, ultimate abilities until damn for a long ass time. You don't have an ultimate ability until let's see the first node, second node, third node, fourth node, fifth node until the sixth node. And I'm level thirteen, and it's telling me I need to spend ten more points to get there. So it's not until you're level twenty three that you actually have a what I would call a build. So you're you you finally acquired enough points to have a full build where you can you can invest in you can fill all your slots. Now anything after that, there's only one note after that actually. Anything after that, you're just specializing. You're like it, and that's exactly how the skill tree is set up. It has these tiny little abilities you can buy later that kind of modify you know, have you noticed that? And then you pick a path and you can't pick the other path. Like, if you pick your ability, you can max it out to five. And then it has this other tiny branch on the top of it that has three little nodes. That's a way of specializing that ability. It'll be like, for example, I have that shadow step ability where I teleport behind people and stab them. And then the next node after that, once I max it out... I can learn it now, but if I, I'm going to wait. When I max it out, it's enhancing it. It does increase critical hit, hit chance that's good then once i buy that i can decide on one or the other i can't get them both i can either get disciplined shadow step or methodical shadow step it's like you're specializing how the ability works if i do methodical they're stunned if i do disciplined my cooldown is reduced but it's like you can't have everything you can't just keep grinding until you have all the abilities you'll have to make decisions so that's a good thing it means you don't have to grind for very long before you have your build that you, you're going to use and then after that you just kind of tweak it if that makes sense. That's pretty much how it works. It's just kind of... That, that way it rewards you. Go ahead. Yep. Right, and that's because you have an item. And you, you'll see that on your skill tree. It'll say, like, benefited by item one point. You have an item that's boosting that ability by one rank. Mm hmm You can just look through all your items. You only have like nine slots. Just look through them all real quick. One of them will say, add one rank to whirlwind ability. And so you decided on a whirlwind playstyle, so that means you're going to be like an area of effect damage dealer. So you're not going to step outside the middle of the fight that often unless you need to take a breath and, he and heal or something. So that means your other abilities, I would say, are th you need to focus on upgrading your other abilities because you said you maxed out that whirlwind. Upgrade other abilities that are useful in between whirlwinds. So like if you're spinning around, you're going to end up probably in the middle of a bunch of enemies. So when you stop, a good thing to do would be to shout when you're in the middle. Just keep looking around for the first two or three nodes. I think it's node three or four down from the top. And you'll see your battle cries and your shouts and stuff. Getting one of those maxed out would be smart. Because then a lot of your barbarian gear, you'll notice, has shouts and stuff. So you might even find a piece of gear that gives you six out of five. But then getting that maxed out would give you a nice secondary. So you spun around, did a bunch of damage to everybody. And then when you're done, you can be like, bruh, and make them all vulnerable. And then while you're... Go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
How many do you have down there? Filled up all of them? We'll just replace one you don't use, because I don't really see you use much other than that spinning one. Just replace one you don't fill up. You shouldn't really be using more than six. That's a lot of abilities. If you're, if you're reaching for more than six abilities, you probably just need to get more effective at the co combining the abilities. So using them in, in different orders so that they're more effective and stuff. You're welcome, buddy. It does the game doesn't come out and tell you any of this stuff, so it's like Right. I, I don't I, I don't know why though I don't know I didn't change anything you can pop into my game right you want to try right now since you're thinking about switching characters I'll just load into my world I don't know I'm fine My character shoots that arrow and it penetrates all the enemies and doesn't lose any damage. So I like to string my enemies along in a line as they follow me and then shoot them all. I'll be fine. Oh, you are. <laughs> you can handle it. Okay. Lorath versus Harath. Lorath versus Harath. Whatever his name is. Oh, this guy's a pussy. Damn, suck you by. Suck my arrows. Got him. Man, my arrow's devastating the damage. Far too easy. These demons will burn me. They were easy. I'd expect more than to realize his ability. Let's search the house. Laura talking shit. Far too easy. He's all the Doom Slayer and shit. Who just slaughters a bunch of demons with what does he have? Like a stick with a knife taped to the end and just goes far too easy. Like, oh badass. I'm all covered in blood. Treasure hunting, Lorath. If we don't hunt for treasure, how are we gonna find treasure? Quests, I think. Save that.
in real life. Oh, cool. Tread carefully. <laughs> Elias could still be close. It's not like you're telling See me to go to the beach and, and squash crabs. Like, oh, geez. What did you say? I didn't even read it. Oh, that's why I didn't read it. The sentence seemed uninteresting. Yeah, they're Lilith worshippers. Yeah, it might be. A lot of evidence, maybe this journal. Today, Master Elias called at my door. I had trouble with my words, so I showed him. My also, confidence. as a barbarian, I think you have the passive ability he to heal. Said he could. So try to save your. See my pain in them. The pain of a lonely man. You'll slowly I'd regenerate health, so don't use your potions unless you're in a fight. The world. And yet. Our mother, That's what it's Lilith, for. found me beautiful. What's nice is it's not like Elden Ring where you have he to like take a swig. Like me See, as well. That game really makes you panic when you use and healing. Together, you have to like run away and give yourself time to take it. The new world. This one it just pops it like a fucking like a needle, a dart. What a dumb mess. Yeah, I had to read that book. That was probably the evidence. He has an idea. Burning hells! We're too late. Elias is long gone. This Genbar is our summoner. How can you be certain? Isn't it obvious? Elias finds Genbar alone, friendless, full of anger. So he plays him like a fiddle, offers him Lilith's love and a part in his grand delusion. Then he gives him tools to express his anger. Summoning scrolls. Very perceptive. Who knows how long Gamba has stewed in this madness? Let's hope he can still be questioned. Genbar, though, huh? I like the way he talks. If you like this universe that they created, they're heavily inspired by the Warhammer 40,000, 40K, sometimes what it's called universe. It's kind of like the Dungeons and Dragons evolved into higher fantasy where there's like pretty much anything can happen in that universe. A lot of this shit comes from straight from Warhammer, in my opinion. There's a lot of them. Not just one. Yeah, I mean, there's like a, th there's literally like a thousand or more Warhammer 40k licensed games. It's this giant, because you can play tabletop games, you can play board games, they have video games, they have movies, they have cartoons. It's just like this giant library of stuff, and it's a really cool world. It's kind of like Tolkien-esque, where they filled it with a lot of lore. Started in the 80s, and every like decade they release another book, and it like updates what's happened in the world so everybody has like a new chapter about all these different guys and what they're doing bunch of generals in space and shit it's sick oh. ah! that's Genbar I can't stop my hands from working Genbar you poor fool and it's super grim my favorite thing about uh the 40k universe is that there's parts of the galaxy because it takes place in like perceivably in the year 40,000 so it's so fucking far into the future that everything we know is pretty much gone kind of like how Star Wars explains its lore it's like that's ah, it's it's so far in the past it's actually the future you know what I mean okay oh.
Oh, it's cool though. You don't have to play every single thing. They've been releasing stuff since the 80s, so you just play whatever you want. But there's there's shooter games and RPGs. There's a little bit for everybody, but it's kind of cheesy. But I think the world is cool though because you can have like in the same universe as a bunch of like guys flying around in spaceships. You have like ancient cults that are actually from the future, but it, it, they're like they they're so far in the future that their world is like. They, they, like, worship gods of technology that makes sense because it's, like, human technology rose to the point where it's, like, magical and then we started exploring the galaxy and that's how we found all these other species and shit. So that's the story of the world. So you can, you can fill it up with whatever you want and a lot of people don't don't really, like, explore it the way the, that they do. Like, most people take, like, the Star Wars approach and it's like, I like Star Wars, but I make fun of them a lot because it's like, there's the snow planet with the snow people and then th this one's... The forest planet with the forest people. It's a little too archetypal where it's like, yeah, I get it. The same people are on the same planet and stuff. But it, with 40K, it'll be like, no, this is a part of the universe that's in such a distant galaxy that it's the medi medieval times for these people. They're on another planet. The planet's called Bling Block. It doesn't fucking matter. But they're, they have like an ancient order of priests that foretold the end of their world and rat people are alive and it's like a, it's like an apocalypse for this world but it's still medieval times but they have like one last hope to try and stop the army of rat people that are now overwhelming the planet and they're like the the rat people have like swords and shields and throw magic at them and shit and they have like pre a priests and like uh, a knight like a mercenary and like you play as these guys fighting these rat and it's like they just created this whole universe not really a universe, but created this whole, like, world for these people to fight in, so you could have this crazy... Because how else would you feel like the end of the world was going to happen if it was medieval times? You would know, because we exist in modern times, that it's not the apocalypse, but because it's the 40k universe, they were able to make it feel like, well, the world already ended, look at all these goddamn rats devouring everybody, let's fight it, let's try to fight it out. So it essentially created, like, a zombie survival game with this crazy fantasy setting. It's just, I didn't even like that game. That's not even a fun game, but it's just cool to me that they did that. Not not well made, no. The, the, the game developers didn't do a good job, but the idea made me want to play it and enjoy it anyway. Just like, just just fighting hor endless hordes of rat things just pouring out of these dens, and you're just like, in like an epoch, like a, it reminded me of that game Hunt Showdown, where it's like, southern Louisiana but after the apocalypse like all the horses are dead all the livestock is starving just basically the whole farms are just on fire nobody's putting the fire out it's just such a surreal landscape that you would only be able to see in that setting because in any other setting in the southern bayous of Louisiana if a whole farm was on fire there'd be dudes running around on horses going dang we gotta put this fire out what the heck and that's what you would see always in that period piece but they were like no this is not a period piece this is a zombie game we just happens to be so well made. It looks like an authentic southern swamp that you're wading through, and you can see gators and hear all the noises. But there's zombies and monsters and fantasy, and it's it, I like that. It's it's cool when they do that. It's hard. It's hard for game designers to do that. That game is cheesy, but it's 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 a love letter to Left for Dead. And if you want to play what I think is the best version of what I was talking about, like where you feel like it's the end of the world and there's just endless zombies coming at you and you're like, okay guys, remember I was talking about Gears of War has a similar feeling where it's like, okay guys, that this is it, let's do our best and then sometimes you make it through and you get that exhilarating feeling of like, oh my god, all four of us are leaving on the helicopter and had we not gotten on this helicopter one second sooner, like if we got, if we had just taken one second more to get on the helicopter, a, a giant zombie would have smashed all of us with a rock. Like, you look back right as the helicopter takes off and a rock goes... And th that game is so well designed, it'll it'll orchestrate those moments without it being scripted like Gear to War, Gears of War had to be. It was just a perfect game. So so they couldn't really they couldn't really outdo that game. They tried, they had hefty shoes to fill. The thing I didn't like about it was it would be like four, four people playing cooperatively like we're playing right now but imagine if I wanted to take so much damage that I was at 10% health and stay there for the whole mission and that was how my character played best was just to be damaged so if you have like it's weird right because it's like okay so you're always going to be one shot away from dying so we're going to be always reviving you but even if I was super good at the game 
it's the type of game where you want to heal each other because you can use med kits on each other and it's like fun you get more points and it's just fun like if somebody's injured you're like here take my med kit i don't need it and you heal them that was like part of what was fun about left for dead and in that game dude if you did that to somebody they would like freak out like you'd just be playing with randoms and you would just be playing and you would go over and heal somebody and all of a sudden this kid with braces spit flying all over his monitor would just light up your mic starting screaming at you about why you shouldn't be healing him and i'm like dang dang i didn't ever expect someone to be, get pissed off at me for healing them in a game and i just it, it, the second that happened i turned the game off it was mad and then googled it and went oh my god so there's characters that don't want to have health they want to take that that doesn't even make sense like in real life why would you be like i hurt me a little oh, okay i'm almost dead let's fight now like what, what is this shit so they didn't they just didn't balance the game in a way that made you feel like you were really fighting for survival. It just felt like you're playing some fucking game, video game, you know what I mean? It was just really cheesy. This game is better than, than that game by far. Like, it, it would be a step backwards for you to play that Warhammer game. But there are some cool Warhammer games. My guy? It says it, it requires level 18, so it is something I can equip, yeah. I just can't use this for five more levels. No. I can't use that hammer. But I can use the sword when I gain a few more levels. Lorath wants, wants to go this way. I'm going the wrong way, sorry. That, they're all level, like, requirements are too high for me. This was level 20. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. Because by the time I get to that level, this will be, um, this will be a blue item. I'll probably have a gold item. <laughs> Went the wrong way. Come with me. Cool. We were. Well, I want to see you after after uh, uh, we're done with this. Uh, we should uh, join. You know what I mean. Play it so I can see it. Ink blot. Thank you for sending Master Elias. But it's, it's definitely a reference to Rorschach. I long for the day. Oh, he doesn't sound so scary. Now his voice side. was scary before. And set. Let's cut his throat. fire. I'm trying to use my backstab ability. Just... Like this skill requires a turn. Get right there, you? bro. Master Elias. Well, yes. In fact, he did. Ours is a very important mission. To cut your fucking head. We have something for the master. That's why right he deals with you. Do you know where he is? Liar. Dirty pig's born liar. How dare you? The master has all he needs. Whoa! My wrist is to me! I'm gonna be on Genbar. Cause I can stay behind him and confuse him while he's trying to attack me. Too fast for you, huh, Genbar? I'm not ready. Man, this motherfucker cannot keep up with me. Look at this shit. He's just getting stunlocked by everything I'm doing. I'm dancing. I'm not ready. Yet. I'm dancing, baby. You can't hold me still. Oh, I walked into his pentagram thing. You just can't walk into his pentagram thing. They interrupt. 
when I do I interrupt my stuff. But if I don't walk into that, I'm good. Need more time. <laughs> you can kill those succubus. Probably the only tough enemy to summon so far. Oh, you missed! You tried, but you missed, Genbar. I need more time. I got him almost down to half health here. Out of energy. I need more time. No. Uh -oh. Why is I'm Why is I not stabbed? He knows your name, bro. I guess, I, I guess we're just not alike. We just politely not attacking him while he's talking? That's nice of us. <laughs> ah, let's get out of that! Oh, he's a pussy. I can kill this guy. I fought these guys before. Mammon. Isn't that the son of Satan? In the Bible and shit? Well. Too slow. Oh, yeah. Too slow for me. I'm like the Prince of Persia, baby. Need more time. I'm on Mammon. I got him down to safety. Mammon's a lot weaker than Genbar. I'll kill him too. I couldn't move. I'm low on energy. I need more time. Mambar is down at 20% health. Yeah, Gambar is gonna take take all of us at once. Both of us anyway. Oh, Mammon's going away from me, scared. Mammon's afraid of me? All good? Oh, backstab, you didn't like that, did you? Die, Mammon. You're next, Genbars. I'm not ready yet. Mr. Genbar. Dude, we're fucking this guy up, bro. Fuck my stabs! Oh man, I thought Lorath was gonna get the final kill cam there, but I stole it from him. <laughs> that would be so funny if it did like a first person view like helmet cam kill. Oh, Elias. <laughs> How vicious you become. Just be I mean it's the same development team, isn't it? Blizzard? Oh I, but no, it's it's the same launcher, but this game's too too separated from Call of Duty really for that. That'd be funny though. I'll Bad news see. first. Gemba was expecting someone. How is he not out of breath? Has turned others to his madness. Taught them to summon too, I'd wager. He's so you chill. Gambar. The master has all he needs. They're about to do something drastic. Let's do something more drastic. And the good news? <laughs> Elias gave us a gift, remember? This demon he sent to kill us. It is unique. It requires constant feeding. Human sacrifices, in fact. If I cut open its belly, someone inside might hold a clue. Tell us where it came from. Cool. I must have it brought to Cat Bardu for examination. It's one of the things I like about this game is the dead bodies stay, they don't immediately disappear. He's just chilling on the ground over here, I can kick him and shit.
That's another really good ability. Um, if you can pick up an item so you don't have to waste the skill point, pick up an item that gives you at least one or two ranks of kick. Because it doesn't really matter how much damage you do. Just just one or two ranks allows you to shove an enemy or two like way the fuck out of the middle of the fight. It's so fun. You can't really kick them off anything high and hurt them, but you can kick them away. I think it's in like the third or fourth node. I just got it from an item, so I don't even know what it is. He's still he's still up there. I don't know what we're gonna, we're, we're supposed to do though. Let's see. Oh, we're just talking to him while he's here. The scholars of Orbe devote their lives to the study of forbidden knowledge. To serve the light, we must know the darkness. Or some other silly platitude. I wrote to the abbot seeking insights on Lilith. His silence is most unusual. The man never misses a chance to speak. Sounds like me. He said, I, I just asked him to, uh, to explain something, and the last thing he said was, The man never misses a chance to speak. That's why I said that. I, I abortled it, yep. I, I, I aborted it to Ken Bardu. Greetings. I am, yes. I can't carry any more. Ooh, we got a nice knife. That's not a knife. This. Bags full, baby. That's the new rap song. That's it. It's a hot, a new hot, the hitter. Like, bags are full. My bags are always full. Dark days upon us. You need a proper weapon. You need a proper weapon. Half can burpin. He can throw a burst. Sealed Oxen Tribe Cash. What the fuck am I supposed to do with this thing? Oh. Carrying too much. Why do I keep? Okay, why am I gonna keep saying I'm carrying too much? Bring me on. I think your character might be saying it too. It's like I'm not carrying too much. Why does she say that? I am in the apothecary, the alchemist. I mean, I'll be here soon. I'm coming to you. I can't use it yet. Um, it's worth three thousand. Oh, I won't even be able to use it because it's uh, it's got a well. It's pointless for me to use it because it's specific for the barbarian. Nice. It's a gold item. I would upgrade it. Oh, that's interesting. Can't salvage it. Well, uh, that's really odd. Yeah, you should be able to salvage it then. I'm gonna go see if I can change my clothes into anything interesting since I've been salvaging a couple of things. 
Do you share when you salvage something like as one character? Do you share the the blueprints? You know, for your appearance anyway. Through other characters or nah. Oh yeah, this is gonna be way better. I was looking like shabtastic. I was like, all right, I look okay, but that is sick. Damn, where did I get that? Covered in belts for some reason. I figure the more belts, the better. Just wrap your body in fucking belts. Guys, a lot of people in my bedroom. Get out of here. Naked. Jesus. I know. I think, but I think like the door threshold when they walk in here, they should go invisible so I don't feel like I'm fucking hanging out with a bunch of people in my bedroom. Maybe when we get richer in the game, we'll be able to get a house. That'd be sick. That's my favorite thing about those games like uh, um, Skyrim and stuff. And, 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 and Oblivion, those RPGs. It was first-person view, so you felt like you were there. And you could fucking go get a house and a wife. <laughs> I downloaded it. It's only six gigs, so I downloaded it real quick. I'll play it today. That one's so small, I wouldn't recommend deleting that one for room, because it's like 5 gigs. I can't carry anymore. Why does he keep saying that every time I come to the blacksmith? He's like, I can't carry no more bloody hell, mate. What's going on? What the hell? <laughs> yeah, look at that. It's worth the coin. What will it be? Upgrade my pants, maybe? Level three pants, no thanks. Yeah, that's more, more like it. All right. I'm carrying too much. I'm carrying too much, but bloody hell, I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm a rebel. I'm down. I'm down to do whatever quest you want to do. I'll just hmm. just mark it, and I'll, I'll I'll mark it also. Just tell me which one you mark. It says you are not yet eligible for this quest on mine. I don't know why. Okay, I'll. Okay. Okay, I'll see, we'll see what happens. Because we're going to stay in Discord anyway, so it shouldn't be confusing. There is a voice chat built into this game, but that's probably not as reliable as this. Yeah, it just says I'm party leader now, so... I guess this is just my game. No, because then it says limited quests, ones I'm not yet eligible for, so I'm st I still must be in your game. Okay, I'm hitting leave game now. 
and then I'm just going. It apparently mattered right there because it said I wasn't eligible for that quest for some reason. I don't know why. It's probably because I just haven't done enough in my world to get, you know, I'm just in my world is probably really basic. But I'm in my world now. Let me change the world tiers. How do you change world tiers? How do you do that? How do you change the world tier? Oh, I go to the main menu. I just realized my thing is. I I always want to play on tier two, and the reason is it's not insurmountably hard. It's always going to be challenging to the point where there's a way to do it. You just got to kind of think, and which which keeps me from falling asleep, to be honest. Because I think tier one are for people who are wide awake, they're listening to music, they're just kind of wanting to click and see some action, see some knights and shit. They're not really that, want to be challenged. I kind of want to keep focused on the game, and that helps me do that. And then the last thing is, it's best loot. Right. Need something for it? Exactly. And I'm looking sick. I look cooler now. Will you see if I see if you like the way I look? Cause I got this at Men's Warehouse, and he specifically told me you're gonna like the way you look. <laughs> the guy with the beard specifically pointed to me, and he said in his cool voice. All right, um, let's see if there's anybody in my bedroom now. Okay. Yeah, I'm in my bedroom in a game. I was never religious until I saw a miracle. Inarius himself blessed the man with the light, got up and walked again for the first cool. time in years, right then and there. The light is real, my friend. Take comfort in it. Okay. It, it how do I change that? Yeah. <sighs> Enable quick join. No, because I didn't invite you. <clears throat> um, so I didn't invite you just now, but you joined my party. Yeah. It's just because misleading. I'm going to turn it on. It's just misleading the way they say that. Because <clears throat> enable quick join is fine, but the, the description confused me. I was like, what? I'm sitting at the bar. Because me, me accepting your request is not an invitation. That's a accept. Right? 
That's like a RSVP or something. You wouldn't call that an invitation. Maybe it is an invitation. What, what, you, what you're doing is in more of an invitation than what I, I'm doing in that situation. I don't know. Hey there. Oh. Hi. I got a spring on my butt. I saw it. Goldie had it. Yeah, she looks pretty. She looks like Cleopatra. Cleopatra was the first badass bitch. Um, Goldie, I taught her how to slide down her slide in her bedroom on her pillow. Like, ride her pillow down the slide. It's so funny. She goes flying. Yeah, she goes flying go towards the ground. She's like, whoa! <laughs> Yeah, you can hit refund all and re and restart it too. There's no penalty. If you earned your skill points, they're never going to take them away from you. Oh, that was my favorite thing about Atomic Heart. Yeah, you're, they're not permanent. Just hit the X button. That's how you do that. Okay. What? How could you say? How could you fuck up so bad? What are you talking about? That's what it does. That's what I was telling you to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was that's why I warned you. I was like this game's not going to punish you and you can, you earned your skill points, they won't take them away. That's why I was trying to warn you for that so it didn't freak you out. That's my favorite thing about Atomic Heart too cuz in BioShock you couldn't do that shit. Yeah, but they, but in Atomic Heart, they're really good at the glove talks to you the whole time, so it, it it calms you down. It goes, it's okay, go ahead and refund your abilities as much as you want. Even on the loading screen, it says stuff like that. And I remember when I was using my abilities at first, the glove goes, remember, use your abilities as much as you want. There's no such thing as mana. There is no mana. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. He says, no such thing as mana. There is no mana. Just use your abilities. <laughs> I was like, cool, I'm on board, thank you. Because I worry about that shit. Remember how I was weird with batteries as a kid? It, it It's permeated my personality to things like that. So I like when games just come out and tell me, don't worry, it's fine. <laughs> it doesn't. This game doesn't do that. <laughs> this game's not like that. This game is similar to Dark Souls where you had to figure it out. Uh, yeah, the the blood the blood is just how many you've invested total. Like the more the more blood is this filling that channel is just the t number of skill points total. It doesn't matter where you put them. I mean, you're restricted to put them in the lower levels at first always, and then and then you can. So you have to be kind of strategic. I like your weapon. That, was like, that would if you had a weapon like that, it would really fuck somebody up in real life. Alright. Hey. 
My guy looks like the, the thief in the game Thief. Thanks. I just, all stuff I found. So with weapons... Uh, yeah, because I changed that setting that you told me. You're welcome. I mean, it would have just... It doesn't... It wouldn't have required... It wouldn't have changed anything on your end if I had not changed that setting. You still would have gotten into my game every time you did that. Like, all you have to... I'm just saying, it didn't really change anything for you. That's, like, a preference for me. Because now, if somebody just hey, just wants to join my game, they just pop in, and I have to kick them out if I don't want them to be in my game. So there's not a single time where I would ever not accept for my mom to join my game, but there's probably almost 100% of the time for everybody else that I would not accept it. Not right. in town. So do you mind if I go change that back now that you understand what I'm talking about? Gotcha. It's it's the same. You would ask me either way, Mom. Like I'm like saying, it, 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 what you just did to join my game was request, and it just auto accepted it. That's all that happened. I'm gonna I'm gonna accept it every time you request it. So it doesn't it doesn't matter. You're still gonna always get in my game every time you do that. Don't worry. It's not like it's gonna gray that option out for you. That was a dumb. That was a really dumb system. Okay, I'm glad you like her. And it's fun to play lower level characters because their build is simpler, so you can kind of, you know. Oh, Goldie today. Speaking of that, I was. She was like, Barbies aren't fun. And I said they're not. And she goes, No, you just. just have them talk to each other, and they just they go shopping. I don't. I don't like. To, I like to play with like. Dog, like Louie and get in a car and go drive around and have adventures and stuff. She was talking about like her other toys being more fun, and I was like, "Well, what about like the Gabby's Dollhouse?" She's like, "Gabby's Dollhouse is fun, but I, I don't like to just look at the dolls. I like to play with them, doing stuff with them." And I was like, "Coolie, you are exactly like me as a kid." I was like, "Coolie, you sound exactly like me. It's exactly how I was." Yep. And then, but, but then I pointed out to her, I was like, but isn't it fun th to just have a lot of stuff? Because she sometimes likes to just show me her things. And I was like, there is something fun about not playing with things and just knowing you have them, right? And she kind of thought about it. And she was like, yeah. And she started talking about stuff that she had that she doesn't play with. Like her, um, what's it called? The, from Frozen, the fucking animal. Sven. She has a Sven doll that she can climb on and ride. And she really wanted it. And she always wants it out and it's just not something she plays with and she just kind of tugs on it and makes sure it, it works still and it's just there and I was like dang it's just like me dude <laughs> it's crazy that's her version of playing with it is just making sure she has it because she's a little girl it's her particular stuff that she wants it's so cute I fucking love it Um. Yeah, in in uh, the in Diablo two, was the necromancer would carry different skulls in his hand, or you could carry a shield if you wanted. But if you carried a skull, it would like buff your magic stuff. Yep, now I, that's one of, the, one of the things I wanted to tell you is that, like, at first you might be stuck with just the skeletons, but now that Yeneth is a higher level, you can refund those and get, like, something that's not annoying. Like, one big something. One big werewolf zombie or something. Who's sick of a zombie werewolf? Tell me of extraction and imprinted. As I'm sure you know, 
even seemingly mundane objects sometimes contain great power. I can help you wrest that power free. The process will break down the original object, leaving behind the pure aspect of its mystical power. You might think of it as ripping the soul from one body and transferring it to another. <laughs> not that I would ever dream of such a thing. <laughs> Certainly not within earshot of the cathedral. <laughs> That's funny. All right, well. Okay, so what is no the last? here. Only honest. So magic. any magic item, which I think are the yellow ones. And then a codex of power, he can make something. I don't fucking understand what's happening here. Oh yeah, you can destroy the legendary item. I haven't found a legendary weapon. Maybe we will when we kill a boss or something. But we most likely have to do something hard. But it's good to know. But the, way, the reason you would do it is, so you break it down, and then you do that enough times, you get like a library of cool aspects, they call it. And then you could take an item and enchant it with those aspects and make an item the way you want it, instead of having to always be rolling the dice about what you pick up make it yourself. Which you can do, but if you have like a high-end item, you might not want to salvage it. You might want to... Like he said here, yeah, he said it here, he just said it breaks it down so you don't get any salvage from the item, but you learn the aspect. Got it. I don't think it's something I give a shit about. It's just what literally was one of my quests was come talk to this guy. And that is the next quest here. Is to go to the cathedral here. Oh, thanks. Kind of what I was going for. A combination of the like, Assassin's Creed and the guy from Thief. Gareth. Talk to this guy. The new militia recruits have oh, been training shit. night. Oh yeah, I need to go uh, cheer at these guys real quick. Efficient. I think you did, yeah. Impressive. Thanks. I hope they don't get super, used to it. Super easy quest right there. Quick and easy. No worries. You... Yeah, she's, uh, she doesn't talk about that much. She, uh, she's, she's, she's like me. She's like, school is not ever, daddy. It's cool. She doesn't really say it that way, but that's like her mentality. She's just like, eh. I'm like, what'd you learn? She's like, eh. Sensory bin today. She's not like today we did, but like every once in a while she'll do something cool, and that's what she's excited about. Like they do this thing where it's like show and tell, but with a twist where you're trying to stump everybody about what you brought. And yeah, like a little game for them to exercise their brain, you know. And then also, you know, if you win, you get a prize or whatever. And and I guess they uh, only had so many questions, and like one guy brought like a toy frog, and she was like, "I'm gonna bring." I don't know what it was. It was like it was a, literally a, another type of frog, but it was like a different version of it. Like imagine, I'm not. It wasn't this, but like imagine, she, like someone brought like a toy horse, and she wanted to bring the horse toy that you with the stick that you ride to like throw people off because they were like, "Well, they wouldn't bring. A, it wouldn't be a horse again. So what is it?" But she, everything would be alluding to a horse. It was something like that, and I was like, that's really smart. And she was like, I'm going to stump everybody, and she was really excited about it. 
And then she didn't stop him. She was bummed out. Right. She could be like, it kind of, you know, that type of thing. Exactly. It was something like that. I just forgot the details exactly. She was telling me the story. And I was like, oh, that's so cute. She's so cute. What does she do today? I'm going to go talk to this guy. Cause I think it's just a conversation. I don't think this is anything you even have to do. I'm going to skip it. No, I'm not going to skip it because I don't remember. But. We were born in sin. Children of darkness. But the Father's light can be sought through penitence and faith. Walk in the light. We must be ever vigilant against sin, brother. Yes, Reverend Mother. Let the light of Inarius burn away wickedness. Let not temptation lead you from his holy radiance. Let righteousness sear away corruption and sin. Cast out thy darkness, for only light must remain. Cast out thine darkness, for only light must remain. Is this the one from Nevest? Yes, Reverend Mother. Did Lorath not accompany you? He sent me on without him. Putting faith in that old man was a mistake. What could possibly be of greater import? Lilith. So, you know. Hmm. Bugs. We have received word from one of our knights of a demon sighting in Gale Valley. The description matches too closely to the sighting in the vest. If you would travel to Yelesna and take stock of events there, you would have the gratitude of the Cathedral of Light. I had thought to send Lorath. But Again, he fails in his duty. With or without Laura, no what I do, I will of an audience shall be around, done. slides straight towards my computer, and then hits the mic. Holy, stop doing that. Just sound set. I'm good. I don't need a goddamn move. And then I'm trying to chill. The second I go into a cutscene, I know it sounds like I'm mad. I'm just yelling because you're on the other side of the room. I'm not mad. Uh, the second I go into a cutscene and want to hold still, there's a fucking wasp thingy crawling on my fucking bare shoulder. I fucking hate bugs so much, dude. I gotta fucking get up and deal with that. And then because I gotta get up and deal with that, I'm gonna move fast because I want to kill it. And then my chair's like, oh, I just a spinning top. I the the t top ride where it's t. -t kettle ride from fucking Disneyland, whatever that shit is. Like, I get up from this chair, and it's like, like a top. It spins around, and it's so, like, brokenly leaned back too far from the fat guy that owned it, that it, like, has, like, the weight distribution is wrong, so it's, it's lopsided, so it's like, here we go, and it's like, starts spinning. And that's annoying, that's annoying, because it always hits my fucking mic. But what's annoying the most is that every time I get up and try to move this chair, all 18 of the caster wheels that are on the bottom, whatever these fucking things are called, are pointed straight at my tower. Which is the only goddamn thing in the entire apartment I don't want to knock into. And every time I try to move this chair, it's like, Wah! and it just goes straight at it, dude. And it's like, bro, if something... Because I've had, like, an Xbox, and I'm like, dude, this Xbox is the only thing in this entire room. And next to the Xbox is a subwoofer, and next to the subwoofer is a dog, and the dog sits down hard to lick her balls... You know, lick her vagina and and puts her back up against the subwoofer, which knocks it over. Which, since the Xbox is propped up vertically, like you're supposed to, it knocks that over and slams it into the ground. And also, there's a giant subwoofer slamming onto it. So it's like, good gosh! While the Xbox is running, of course, and then that Xbox literally never runs the same again. It'll always crash after that. And it's like, that's my kind of luck. So I have to be careful with electronics. Even the slightest thing will be like a weird Rube Goldberg. Like dominoes are falling, and there's like a contraption with levers, and a ball is rolling, and the paint can falls over and pours directly into my computer. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, didn't see that coming. Yeah, yeah. Nobody did because it was it's silly. He's like, I don't want to fucking clock right there. I just want a VCR, dude. No, no one ever set the. You mean the clock? Yeah. 
flashing 12. What are you trying to do? I'm sorry, that that was not what we were talking about at the beginning of the conversation. So I'm confused. You, you're saying you have you have a router in your house, but your R room is not in the house, and you want internet to go from the inside of the house all the way through to the other house. I'm not sure, but you can't do that. It won't work. You'll need another router. No, just another router. You can get more than one. Yeah. Well, you just said whatever you were trying to do with an extender wasn't working, so there must be some other device that's either a switch, a router, or a hub that'll allow you to extend it out there. I have panoramic Wi-Fi router that doesn't uh, need that unless it's like a giant house, but if you have a big house, you can have multiple routers. You just have to call your ISP, they'll set it up. I'll just give you another one. I don't know, but that's the answer. You gotta call your ISP because they're gonna have to run a cable out there for you. You're welcome. You just, in mid sentence, you shifted. I was listening and I was like, oh, yeah, well, okay. No worries. That's not, that's not weird. That's, if, if you're ex seeing that it says Friday and you're thinking it's a Friday, that's, that's a common thing. Don't worry, don't beat yourself over that. That's a common thing people would do. Because people normally are, go on the weekends, that's their days off. And so when it's not, that's confusing. Because you saw Friday. I don't know. That's okay. I think because it's probably on your mind, and then now, now you know. <laughs> this didn't make me mad. I don't care. I just, I just wanted to point it out to you. I don't know what you were talking about before, but you might have had something else you wanted to say, and then that interrupted you. Oh, man, and then Goldie was talking to me about, uh, we were just laying in her bunk bed, and, uh, I think she was eating breakfast. I had finished, I scarfed it down, of course, and then, uh, she was, uh, she said, if you scratched with fingernails, it wouldn't hurt that bad, and I said, like, out of nowhere, like, yeah, she was looking at her fingers and her nails, and she was like, why use my fingernails to scratch somebody, it wouldn't hurt them that bad. And like, it was almost like my hair on the back of my neck stood up. I was so excited. I was like, you're, you're, now you're talking my language. And I just said, oh yeah, it would. You know where to hit them. In the eyes, the neck, and then and I, I, I just pointed at her, her vagina and I said, in the pee-pee. Those three spots and your nails will do damage. And then, and she, yeah, and then she started to scratch her eye, eyes with her eyelids closed with her nails. And she was like, yeah. And I was like, see how soft your eyes are. You're not, there's nothing that can stop. And I was like, now feel your neck, how soft it is. And then she was like, yeah, and she reared back up to kick the um, uh, mattress on top of me. She was like, look at it, just, you know, she's so ADD, she's like this, she just immediately changed the subject. And that's, I was kind of cute, what you just did reminded me of that. She was like, in the middle of poking herself in the eyes, she just went, look at it, and just started kicking up. And I used to do that all the time, just kick the mattress above you and make it rise up off the wood thing. And she, 
just like because it feels good and i was like speaking of that imagine if you kick me in my neck like with your legs like that and then she did kind of kick me in my neck and i was like yeah you could do some i think i even said on accident i was like you could like kill me if you did that but i i later i was like i was kidding you couldn't really kill me like that that's too tough but i wanted to tell her i and i just she's a little too young but i wanted to tell her you could kill somebody like that but i in mid-sentence i changed it you could kill daddy and i was like ah no you couldn't really kill daddy like that i wouldn't i wouldn't die but a, an unexpected person getting kicked straight in their Adam's apple by Goldie's full force would die from that right now. It's just crazy. And I was so impressed by that, I wanted to tell her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't really know. No, I would I would say she know, she would do that, but she doesn't really... You can't really say, like, what do you do if a guy's going to get you? She's too immature for that. But she definitely would run away she's like a very a very skittish i'm not gonna just stand here and go what's going on type of kid like she would get the fuck away but if somebody was talking to her she's gonna like smile and wave as she's walking away with wave from them smiling at their at their inability to stop her she's not gonna be tricked by anybody she so doesn't give a fuck when people tell her what to do it's so funny okay um nope. Yeah, my my quest is Act One: A Cold and Iron Faith. Do you see that in your uh, journal? Okay, well then I'll just I'll mark it. There it is. Ooh, it even makes a path for me. That is cool. I'm familiar with that. That's what I do all day at work. Stare at that line. Because it keeps me from having to think. It'll get me into trouble occasionally, but if I just follow the fucking line and don't think, it makes my... Because this is what I do. My job is, from the beginning, pick up a ship. Once that's done, the stress is over. All the stress of my job is just picking up a ship. If I pick it up at the right facility, it's easy to get there on time. Just set an alarm, you go there, and then I... I get the packages on the ground out of the bin, and now I number them from 1 to 40 or whatever. So, like, 40 stops is about the average. And then I'll put, like, 1 through 10 in the front seat, 10 through 20 in the back right seat, 20 through 30 in the back left seat, 30 through 40 in the trunk right side, and then any other ones in the trunk left side. And so I'm just, like, pulling to a stop, turning and grabbing a package and walking up and setting it at the door and taking a picture of it and walking back to my car. That's the remainder of the shift. Unless there's, like I've told you, some weird apartment complex or something that slows me down a little bit, it's the entirety of the stress is gone as long as I just look at the line and follow it. But I started, you know, when I first started, I would stress myself out because it would sometimes make me go in weird places and I was like constantly... Oh, is it making me go through a gate? I hope I have a code. And I would like worry all the time and it made my... Uh, job really uh, stressful. I just get programmed to be nervous, and I, I needed to. There's no reason to be nervous. If you can't get in, you can't get in. You just go back. The way people drive makes me annoyed, though. Like, it makes me feel like, like they just get right up on you when you're going into a place, and it's like, I can't go forward because I don't have the code for the gate, and I can't go back because you're an inch from me, bro. What do you want me to do? And they're just like, bam, bam. I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh, you turned into a whirl. That was cool. No. That's what I'm here for. Oh, it makes me feel good. Thank you. Need more time. Because it can be overwhelming. That's why I get frustrated. Overwhelmed by games, the decisions they make, and ugh. too much. Oh, 
about the guy? Is he, is he dead? Looks like he's alive. We just read his book and he's just the guy laying there. Alright. Maybe there's something I could do there. Save these people. Werewolf versus werewolf. One guy. Have made it oh no, we saved two caravans. Okay, cool. Much better loot because we're on that higher tier. I appreciate that. We should kill who? No, we just this this was a caravan under siege. Was the, well done. That was what it was. Oh, look, she's praying. Praying for that dead guy that died. I once had a cat named Snowball. She died. She died. <laughs> they said she ran away. She lied. She lied. That's a Simpsons reference. I don't know if you got it. That. That Lisa is like talking to Homer, and she's like, she's like uh, hanging out with him in her bedroom, and he's like, "What do you want to do?" And she's like, "I could read you one of my poems," and he goes, well, "All right," like <laughs> like begrudgingly, and that's what her poem is. She's like, "I once had a cat named Snowball. She died. She died." They said she ran away. They lied. They lied. And Homer's like, that's enough. And just leaves. <laughs> and walks out. <laughs> I love the Simpsons. Where'd she go? Nah, it was when we transferred into this area. Like, she must have went to a different server. That was weird. Me neither. Oh, I cut him in half. Okay, that guy's big. And surface, dude. With the wood rate. They're e if you get behind them, they're easy to 
They can't turn very fast. Pretty easy to dodge. Good job. Kind of intimidated me. Right, we're almost there. It might be a city too, so it might be able to fill your health pools. That's where your spinning ability would really come in handy. Equipped to fight these types of demons, but we are. Because we are demons. That was my favorite thing about Doom, the new one, is that in the original Doom, he was just like a space marine. And in the new one, he's like a demon. It's a cool idea. I was thinking about that as I was driving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another game. If it's ever on Game Pass, you've got to check it out. Doom Eternal is probably the most fun, but I think Doom is the best version. They're, they're both like, you can play them both. They're both good. So Doom Eternal is more about the storyline, and Doom is more about just the fun. Playing. A little bit less story for that one. I'm not ready yet. No, this is the town. I provide a steady supply of, shall we say, specimens for the clergy nearby. However, their desire for knowledge has become more dangerous to satisfy. I require a host of intact ghoul hearts from the surrounding area. There's something special about the ravenous dead nearby. They can reanimate with only a few drops of blood. I'd venture out and retrieve these myself, but I'm more accustomed to dealing with the fully dead. Your discretion is appreciated, of course. And you will be rewarded. So, like, in the first Doom... Oh, sorry. In the first room, he was just a space marine, so there was, like, portal technology being used, and those portals, they accidentally opened up a portal to hell, and demons came through and killed everybody. So he was, like, just the last dude. He was, like, the toughest guy. And since he was on, like, a space installation he, in, in the Doom original games, he comes back to Earth, and it's too late. They made it down to Earth. Earth is gone. So you fight your way through Earth, and then there's Doom 64 where he goes back to hell to fight him in their home world. And then there's Doom 3, which kind of like it's just, it doesn't have anything to do with the story. It's like a different game. And then there's the Dooms I'm talking about that came much more recently. And they basically like picked up where the story left off in a cool way. Like instead of it just being this Doom space marine guy who's been through all this shit, having him be like this John Wick badass human, he no longer speaks... He's insanely strong, he's ultra smart, and he seemingly knows exactly what the demons are doing right before they're gonna do it, in the sense that he's he's like motivated to go kill the most powerful demon, always. Like the the most like specific you know, thing about him is that he always wants to kill the the strongest demons. And then also throughout the course of the game, you have this AI that is scanning all of reality for you to figure out where you need to go so he always knows exactly where to go 
Like, the, instead of it being like, oh, this guy's just trying to escape, it switches it. And in the new Doom games, basically the story goes, he went through a portal at the end of the old Doom. Basically, after he went to hell, he took a portal back. And instead of the portal taking him back to Earth, because Earth is gone, it just sent him to another dimension where the demons are using the portals to kill more people. Because the more people and more animals or whatever the fuck aliens they kill and drag into their hell, the more powerful they become. Because they're, like, using souls in hell as, like, a furnace fuel to, f to fuel their magic is basically how demons work, I guess. <laughs> and so the Doom guy, he went through the portal that sent him into another dimension ahead of the demons. So when he got there, he was just this guy who had, like, PTSD, a human... And the world he went to was kind of like a, a futuristic version of our reality where there was, like, humanoid people who were, like, sentient and aware, just like us, and conscious and stuff. And they had a history that was a little bit different than ours, but they evolved basically fighting these demons also and had beaten them back, and their, their reality didn't have any demons in it. And he was there, you know, telling them about demons, so they're like, oh, shit, here comes the demons. But they basically just threw the guy into, like, the arenas to see how tough he was, because they're, like, a... It, it reminded me of Halo. It was, like, a very futuristic society that was, like, a commentary on what would happen if, it, you know, technology advances, like, very aristocratic and stuff. And they noticed that he was a good fighter. And so Doom Guy became, like, their general in their army. And then when the demons finally started invading, they found out that he was super good at killing them, because that's all he had been doing in the previous games. So he was elected by, like, their top military officials which are like godlike creatures they like they don't even have like a physical form they have like cloaks and like these weird like alien hands you don't even see them they're like floating around and shit they they elected to put the doom guy into a machine that contained technology from their ancestors the guys that were fighting the original demons when like reality formed and the, those were like the toughest dudes ever cuz all they did was kill demons they didn't have time to eat or breed or die, they had to live forever because these demons were like teleporting around and breaking the laws of reality. So they needed something strong enough to defend their little humanoid race so they could evolve. And the only people that could do it were these like badass dudes that were, they had this Im immense willpower that could like bend reality. And that's a machine left over that does something. They don't even know what it does. So they fucking just throw the Doom guy in it, shut him in there, and turn it on. And when they're doing that, because they knew, they know something's gonna happen, they just don't know how it works. And before they turn it on, they, they tell the Doom guy, now the demons will fear you. And they shut the machine and turn it on, and you see it from the perspective of the first person view of the Doom guy, and it just lights up with all this yellow fire, and he just starts shaking and screaming. He's like, ah! And then the machine shuts off, and he's got his fists clenched into balls, and he's going, ah, 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 and he stops talking. He never talks after that. That's like the last time he speaks. And the only things he says before that is just like gibberish. He just starts babbling about demons and how he has to kill them all. He doesn't say anything sensible. So the machine finally like breaks his sanity by like doing something to him that's immensely painful. And then after that, when he kills demons, they give him power. So... The machine somehow gave him the abilities of his ancestors in another d dimension, because it's not human ancestors, it's like the, the abilities from some other dimensional monster from the past, he has their ability to absorb like the souls of the things that he kills, just like the demons do. So he's like a demon himself for the rest of the game. He doesn't speak, and every time you kill a demon you get a little of your health back. So you can take some serious damage, but not for long. You have to like quickly resort to torturing demons and ripping their innards out and killing them in ways that hurt them more because that heals you more. <laughs> so cool, dude. Uh, it's a cool treatment. Okay, buddy. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, no worries. Let me know if you want to play Call of Duty or something. I'll probably not work today. I'm probably just going to chill. I don't even relax. I'm kind of, I got a lot of sun today. I'm kind of exhausted. Okay, no pressure though. Whatever. I love you too. I'll talk to you later. Bye, Mom.
getting hungry too. I was gonna make sloppy joes, but I should probably make chicken and rice again because that chicken does not need to marinate any longer. So chicken and rice again tonight. Chicken rice broccoli. Turned out good. I used expired soy sauce on the broccoli though. Ew. That didn't turn out good. Ruined my broccoli, but this time I'll just use some salt. Hey, the hog's head. Look, I didn't ask for this post, but as long as I'm here, I may as well make some money. Don't worry, I'll tithe. Story changes depending on who you talk to. Some say demons, others say werewolves. Don't really matter, who means the same thing. Closed minds and idle hands. Theodore left our home in the middle of the night. I heard him talking to someone, another woman. I went to confront them, but they fled towards a strange light in the forest. They have been gone all night. I think it's time I went after him, but the forest is dangerous. Would you accompany me? track main quest that's weird what's this oh. what about that was this way Whoa. I was worried this is gonna be hard. Nice. Bitch. 
Oh, I'm trying to drink some water. Damn. We want me to be dehydrated and shit. Right, let's go. Not looking good for your husband so far. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ghouls. There's a good deal of ghouls here. time. Impressive. May you know bliss eternal. Oh my god. Theodore? What has happened? Oh heavens. No. No. Such sights I have witnessed. Such pleasure. What the fuck? Such pain. I must have more. What? Fyodor? Uh, how is it that you... More! What Please, go after that woman who did this to him! More! 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 What the fuck is happening? It's no surprise Fedor was drawn to me. But I have given only what was desired. <laughs> His petty soul has been torn asunder by agony and ecstasy, but his flesh is unyielding. You will not interfere. Ready yet. 
need more time. I'm low on energy. Gotcha, bitch. You expect me to backstab you. There are so many ways I can kill you. Cool, dude. This guy. More. More. You, if it's a reward you want, take the dagger from his chest and leave me be. Pedro says gurgling, <laughs> you know. Need something for it? In the park, nice. That there is worth the point. Come back if you need work. Okay. 
I got an extra ability. Sick. Keep it. I am not after your money, just your ear. I can feel it. A great calamity is about to unfold in the northern reaches. The door is in danger. I don't understand. It was sealed for a reason. And now the pig-headed beasts are trying to force it open. Heed my warning and stop them. It must remain sealed. Perhaps a better question is, why are you the only one to take it seriously? I once... <sighs> that was long ago, I suppose. It was only an apple I stole. The father wouldn't want me to go hungry, would he? time. Get out of here. Energy. I like that way better than a factory shot. Need more time.
enough energy. I'm not ready yet. My husband was a hard man to love. Now even the frozen ground won't take his body. Who the hell are you? Mm, no, don't answer. You step lightly, and you reek of dried blood. You're a killer. What do you want? I heard you can teach me a few things. <laughs> Let's see if you're worthy of teaching first. I've got a job that needs doing. You help me, maybe I'll help you. I run with the sisterhood of the Sightless Eye. One of ours is missing. Bakira. She took two rookies and set out after an artifact, a coin. Help me find her. If you're not all talk, you might learn a thing or two. Blood everywhere, but only one stab wound. A quick kill. And they tossed her remains to the wargs. Messy, but it covered their tracks. Smart. Need more time.
need more time. first finished him off when he was down whoever it was they were trained as a rogue okay put me sleep Gonna eat something. Stop playing this sleepy ass game with no fucking music. What is up, Diablo? No music, no sounds. It's so fucking boring, dude. The game itself is not boring, but just having there be no noise other than in the background is fucking boring, man. Please sleep. Fall asleep here. It's fucking four in the afternoon. Fall asleep. <laughs> 